I hope you have heard about man in the middle attack. The attackers are able to intercept all the relevant messages passing between client and server through an untrusted and unsecure medium. To prevent this attack, we use secure socket layer or TLS cryptographic protocols. SSL is deprecated and replaced by TLS. As the name suggests, transport layer security works at transport layer of our network OSI model or TCP model. When a computer connects to a website, communication begins between the computer's web browser and the web server the site is hosted on. Typically, this communication is unguarded, meaning it's out in the open and any one interested third party can have a look at it. As you can imagine, if you are transmitting important personal information, having it out in the open is not an ideal way. SSL TLS serves two functions. It grants permission to use encrypted communication between public key infrastructure and also authenticates the identity of the certificate holder. Let's talk a little bit about types of encryption that we are having or cryptography. So we are having a symmetric kind of encryption. Symmetric uses the same key for to encrypt the data on both server and client. So there is only one key available at both the places. This makes us a little bit unsecure because if anyone have the access to that particular key, which we used to send through an unsecure medium, they can access your data. AES, DES, 3DES, etc. are the examples of symmetric encryption. Next we have asymmetric encryption. Asymmetric encryption uses two keys. One is private, that is on the receiver's end, and public key on the sender side. The receiver is the server and the sender is the client. Examples of asymmetric includes RSA, ECC, etc. Now let's discuss what is the issue with symmetric and asymmetric encryption. In the symmetric encryption, the two parties used to share a key usually across an untrusted, unsecure medium. If you are having a key and that key is used for encryption and you are going to decrypt using the same key, then you need to move that key from client to server, right? How you are going to do this? Either you will take that key in a pen drive and go to the server's location and insert that key in the server and that is going to be a secure medium, right? But we are not going to do like this. This is not possible. So we have to use internet to move that key and there man in the middle attack can occur and anyone can get access to that key and if he have access to that key then any data that you encrypt and send to the server can be decrypted by that key. Next what is the problem with asymmetric key? Asymmetric key is extremely slow. It takes a lot of processing power, RAM, CPU it's, and it's really not a good idea to encrypt large chunks of data. But you can think what if we are able to merge these two things? if we are able to use the hybrid of symmetric and asymmetric? What if we are able to uh, send the symmetric key using asymmetric encryption and send the data using symmetric encryption? So this is what actually happens and we'll see later in this uh, in these slides. Let's talk a little bit about RSA. Uh, it has two keys. One is a receiver public key and one is a private key. And data is uh, encrypted at the client using the public key and then that key is uh, and private keys is stored on the server. When data is sent over the internet and received by the server, server can only decrypt it. And actually I want to show you this in demo. RSA stands for uh, Revist Shamir Alderman. I think they are the name of the scientist who developed RSA. You can read more about this, but what I want to show you is uh, let's generate the RSA keys. So we are going to generate a 2048 uh, bit RSA key and let's do that. So you can see that we have a public key and we have a private key and we are going to encrypt our data using the public key on the client end. So copy this public key and uh, uh, let's uh, insert some secret data. So I want to insert that password uh, equals to abc at the rate 1 to 3 and I want to encrypt this password so that I can send it over the internet and uh, I'll use the cipher RSA and just encrypt this data. So if someone tries to uh, get the data, they will receive this. So if a uh, man in the middle attack happens and uh, they are however access to your data, they will be able to save this. And until unless they have the private key, which is stored on the server, they cannot access your data. 
So how server used to encrypt, uh, decrypt this data. So we'll copy this data. This data is moved to server. So server is having this data and server is also having a private key. So now we'll copy this private key from here and send it to server, right? Okay. And now uh, it was the cipher type RSA, which is known to the server as it is sent in the request as metadata. And then we decrypt it and here we see the data, right? So this is how public key infrastructure works. And this is how us symmetric uh, encryption works. Now, suppose someone uh, changes this uh, data means manipulates the data with uh, uh, some, I'm going to edit this manipulate, manipulate this data. And now I'm trying to copy this and uh, paste the data here and now try to uh, decrypt this data. So you see that there is a decryption error. It cannot decrypt the data. You can play here with different uh, manipulations of private key, public key. What if I change some private key data? What if I change public key? So you can do that here and uh, uh, check what, what is the result and let me know if you get something interesting. We can also play with a uh, symmetric key. And uh, here in this, in case of symmetric key, we suppose I have generated a key and this is the key, right? And uh, we need to encrypt some message. So suppose this is the message that we are sending, right? And we have a sym symmetry key as 79, right? This is symmetry key. And we are generating a text. So this is the cipher text. And this cipher text when added here, and the problem here is see, we, ha we have to enter the same symmetry key here. So if anyone having access to this symmetry key can decrypt your data, right? So see, I'm having access to the symmetry key and I can decrypt the data. So that is the problem with symmetry key. Next, why we should use RSA 2048? The simple reason is it is good balance between security and efficiency. We have different RSA type that is 4096. Uh, the problem with 4096, it is uh, not very efficient, but yes, it is secure. So some of the root CAs uses RSA 4096. We had, we have other options like ECDSA P256 and ECDSA P384. Let's talk about TLS handshake and how it works. Few slides before I said you that what if we use a hybrid connection asymmetric key exchange and symmetric data exchange. So we have a client, we have a server, client says hello to server and then on the server public key and private key is generated. The server says hi to a client and sends the public key to the client. On the client end symmetry key is generated. The symmetry key is encrypted using the public key that was given by the server and then that symmetry key is exchanged with the server. So this time, if someone gets access to this particular symmetry key, he cannot do anything because you don't have private key to decrypt and get the symmetry key. So our symmetry key reaches server safely. And then on the server, we have symmetry key. And now we can, the server and client can talk to each other using symmetry key. And that data is, we can send bulk data from client to server as symmetry key encryption is lightweight. So this is a uh, TLS handshaking in a uh, summary. There is lots of stuff going on and backend and you can learn more about it by uh, Googling it about. Let's talk a little bit about PKI. So PKI is a framework based on asymmetric encryption. The underlining purpose of any PKI setup is to manage the keys and certificate associated with it, thereby creating a highly secure network environment for use by application and hardwares. I have found a great video. So let's watch this video. PKI or public key infrastructure is defined as a framework for managing digital certificates, encryption keys, and everything in between. It's the most important term in the cybersecurity world. Let's take a closer look at it to understand why. In this video, we'll take a look at the basics of public key cryptography, how it works, and the role digital certificates play in enabling PKI. The primary role of PKI is to establish identity and encrypt data flowing across the network, thus protecting sensitive information from being accessed by unauthorized parties. Public key cryptography is the system that makes this possible. 
It does so by employing a two-key system that makes it possible for both parties to verify each other's identities and then establish an encrypted connection between each other. You'll understand this better with an example. Assume you're trying to connect to a website from your computer. What actually happens here is your browser attempts to establish a connection with the web server that hosts the website. However, your browser must first verify the authenticity of the web server to ensure that the website is truly what it claims to be. After all, you don't want to end up on an illegitimate copy of a website that could end up stealing your personal information. The authentication process relies on asymmetric encryption, which is where the two-key system comes into play. Any entity on the network which leverages encryption possesses a public key and a private key. You can think of a key as an encryption tool, something that transforms plain text to ciphers and vice versa. In the case of asymmetric encryption, anything encrypted using a public key can only be decrypted with the corresponding private key and not with a copy of the same public key. Let's take a look at how they work in our browser web server example. First, your browser requests the server to present its public key. Public key information is accessible online and is not secret. The server complies by sending the browser a copy of its public key, and the browser uses it to encrypt a temporary session key, which it sends back to the server. Now, if the web server is legitimate, it will possess a secret private key that corresponds to its public key, which can be used to decrypt the session key. Once it informs the browser that it has succeeded in doing so, the browser takes it as a confirmation that it is legitimate and opens up an encrypted communication channel with it. This entire process ensures that any unauthorized third party cannot intercept this communication channel without possessing the designated keys. However, there's a loophole in the system. What if a hacker was masquerading as the web server after somehow obtaining its public and private keys? Your browser would be incapable of verifying ownership of the initial private key transaction without some additional information to do so. This additional information is what digital certificates provide. Digital certificates, also called SSL, TLS certificates, are proof that an entity is the legal owner of its encryption keys. They're issued by trusted bodies called certificate authorities, or CAs, which are responsible for generating, digitally signing, and selling certificates to a requester after verifying its legitimacy. CAs take particular care to verify that the requester is the legitimate owner of the domain for which a certificate is being requested. Only then does it provide them with a signed certificate that can be attached to their public key. Now, how does this fit into our browser server example? When your browser requests the web server to produce its public key, the server will also send the certificate that possesses the CA's digital signature, along with other details that will allow the browser to confirm that it is actually transacting with the web server. Thus, the digital certificate serves to legitimize the entire transaction from the get-go, thus establishing full trust and credibility in both parties. In fact, any website that lacks a certificate is immediately flagged as suspicious by most browsers, which results in the infamous SSL certificate error that stops people from accessing the website. To summarize, everything we discussed so far from asymmetric encryption to keys to digital certificates constitutes what is... Okay, so let's get back. I hope you get a uh, good overview of what PKI is and what uh, certificates are and how uh, that certificate is signed and what is CA and what are digital certificates, right? Now let's talk about contents of a certificate. So in a certificate, we have a distinguished name which is simply a unique name that, that identifies the user who requested that certificate. The date of issuance and the date of expiry to estimate the certificate's lifetime. The public key, the purpose of the certificate, which could range from signing a code to encrypting communication channels, and there are other options which I'll show you. Sorry, and a digital signature, which is the CS guaranteed that the certificate is valid and belongs to a user in question. So let's see this in your browser. Let's go to settings and manage certificate. Okay. So here are the lists of certificate that are, uh, that we have and, uh, 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 that are, uh, here are the lists of certificates that our browser trusts 
we have intermediate certificate authority and trusted root certificate authority and suppose i open uh, any of the certificate and the information that we get in a certificate is the certificate uh, purpose of the certificate and the purpose are like it proves your identity to remote computer ensure software come from software publishers uh, protects email messages and uh, lots of other purposes are there it uh, let us know that who has issued the certificate and uh, the certificate uh, issued to whom and what is the validity from that is this certificate is valid uh, from 1st 1-1-2004 to 1-1-2029. There are lots other details of this certificate and this includes the version, serial number, issuer, a validity from and uh, definitely uh, you'll see the P PKI public key and uh, uh, we have some key uses means they are the uses that the certificate is used for offline CRL signing and CRL signing and certificate signing. Lots of other details you can find and find the path of the certificate. So we have seen that how our uh, certificate look like in a browser and next uh, we should just we have also seen that the list of certificate authorities that are trusted by our browser they are root uh, trusted certificate as well as uh, intermediate certificate authorities. We can use AEW certificate manager to generate our private CA and sign lots of certificates or we can use AWS certificate authority and sign our public certificate uh, for our domain. So if possible, uh, so we'll see this in action, like how to use certificate authority, how to create certificate authority and how to generate and how to request for public certificate for our domain. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.